Greetings brothers and sisters, Bartek here back with another video in the beginning series where we take a look at the first 30 to 40 plus minutes of games to see if they tickle your fancy. Today, we're taking a look at the Pegasus Expedition, a game developed by Kala Gamesworks from Finland and published by Fulcrum Publishing. The Steam page of the game reads, the Pegasus Expedition is a story-driven sci-fi grand strategy game set in a key moment for humankind's survival facing an overwhelming threat at home humanity sends expeditions to the pegasus galaxy in a desperate attempt to find a refuge for the population of earth now before we journey to that galaxy far far away a short disclaimer i am not a big fan of grand strategy games for at least two reasons first off I find them to be as enticing as amusing at a friggin' spreadsheet. Now, I know that there are people out there who get a raging boner at the mere thought of gazing at them columns and rows, and that's perfectly fine, but I am not part of that crowd. Now, secondly, since I lack the patience to spend dozens of hours battling it out with the learning curve and needing to spend what seems like a lifetime learning the ropes of the game, I simply tend to avoid all the Crusader Kings and Europa Universalists out there. Well then you might ask, Bartek, what in the nine hells made you check out what is essentially a grand strategy game? Now, the answer to that is simple. I've heard that it's uh, much more approachable and easier to get a grasp on than the quote-unquote big names of the genre. And after spending about an hour in the game prior to recording, I have to say that yes, it is more approachable, and no, it's not too easy to get a grip on, at least initially. And it's not due to the sheer complexity itself, but rather owing to a poorly done set of tutorials that I have turned off. I'm doing that right now. Yep. That I have turned off for the purpose of this video. And now I will be explaining stuff as we go along. So let's get going. In 2262, humanity was at war. A huge, sentient, and hostile life form known as the Colossals was threatening the Earth, leaving humanity little choice but to start seeking refuge elsewhere. The Pegasus Expedition was the attempt to achieve that. Three powers from Earth sent their best fleets of the expedition, the rest focusing on defending Earth until the expedition would return. The Zeus Link fleet, sent by the Europe European Union, has been put under your command, Director. It is, it is now up to you to make a difference. Officers, soldiers, colleagues. You all know very well why we are here, and what we are about to do soon. First, remember this moment. And remember the stakes. We will risk ourselves on behalf of everything you care about and everyone you ever knew. And when the time comes, you will be troubled. You will doubt. We all will. At that very moment, remember this. Do your best. Do what you can. And it will be enough. It will be enough if anything in our power can be. There's no telling how this is going to end. But in the end, one thing will be certain. That we gave it all we had. Now, as it turns out, for all intents and purposes, in this game, we are the baddies we eradicate alien civilizations with shock awe, fire and fury the game tries to pose the question of how far a player is willing to go to save one sentient species at the cost of wiping out countless others and even though you can't go full mahatma gandhi in the game there's no need to slide to the other side of the spectrum and turn into a spacefaring genghis khan genghis khan excuse me but ultimately the choice of how many war crimes you want to commit is up to you so let us take a look at the interface 
the said approach to dealing with uh, the style of war that you are going to wage is portrayed by the galactic reputation. You start off on the left side of the spectrum as a diplomat, you are regarded, even though an enemy, you are regarded an honorable enemy who follows rules of engagement and, let's say, the Space Geneva Convention, if, if it's such a thing, if there is such a thing in this particular setting. Uh, but the more rogue and the more brutal and the more barbaric your actions are during the operations, the more your reputation shifts to nemesis, and then you are seen as an absolute brute, as an absolute threat, and various factions tend to, well, act differently in reaction to you and your presence in various sectors of the space. Apart from the reputation tab, you've got the resources tabs. You have your minerals, you got your rare earth, rare earth minerals, you have your population, you have your energy, and the overall happiness. To the right, you have the admirals, who are the commanders of the various fleets. You have governors, who are in charge of, well, governing your colony's planet side. And you have operatives, who play the role of, to put it simply, spies, who are used for various activities, such as diplomacy and uh, sabotage, espionage, and other ages as well. Next to the right, you have your science resource that is used for sizing, for sciencing things out. And you science things out by means of this technology research tree that is, well, I've seen bigger ones, like in Civilization, for example. But this one, you know, has nothing to be ashamed of. It's, it's pretty big. It's pretty comprehensive. And... Yeah, you can go crazy with your preferences. All right, now, because I've, uh, like I said, played this game once, I roughly know what I'm supposed to do. And I've turned off the tutorials, which weren't very good, because even despite that they were leading you by hand, they didn't do a proper job of explaining why you're doing certain things. So if we zoom in, we start here. This is the blue territory of the Zeus Link fleet of the European Union. And we have two fleets. The first fleet is the El Fabra fleet. And the second one is a garrison fleet that is garrisoning this star system right here, the Zara system. What the game wants us to do first is to move our fleet to the Zoka star system and the way you traverse the map is through this web of space highways you can't move around freely you have to choose the pre 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 predefined paths that the game uh, shows you right so these little white lines so let's do just that you can perform two move actions per turn these are indicated by these little green triangles right here right so we're going to move the fleet down to the zoka system and we are moved into a cutscene. Welcome to the Pegasus, Pegasus Galaxy, Director. The Pegasus Expedition has now officially begun. A perimeter around the portal has been formed and the main force is being moved through. So far it's all according to plan, you could say. And here is where the story kind of comes in, because now and again the game gives you options. I, to be honest, don't know how heavy of the consequence how heavy uh, a consequences are um, attached to, to to these choices but you get to make them nonetheless uh so first one so are we pretty spare head so we are spareheading the expedition how detailed of a plan do we actually have very well what now yeah very well what now right now we can't stay around the portal for long so we need to move into the closest star system to form up yes our recon units are already approaching the zoka system that we just did before the cutscene and there we got to set up some infrastructure assess the surroundings and start making ourselves permanent my teams are still on the other side once they've come through and set themselves up we'll start making sense of all the information we should be already collecting Oh, we are, don't you worry, Dr. Lawrence. That does leave the question of dividing the initial systems between us and our allies. I presume the logistics would demand that... 
Grand Admiral Perron, Director, sorry to interrupt, but we've got an urgent transmission from the recon units in the Zoka system. Well, what is it about? This is a rather important meeting we're having. I know, ma'am, but it's that they've made contact. It took nine hours. Nine hours in the Pegasus Galaxy, and we were at war. They didn't fire warning shots. And we... We weren't going to take it lying down. Okay, so this is the combat screen. I'm gonna explain how this works in just a second. Now, the... Well, mmm... Um, fight is going to be happening in the Zoka system into which we have moved just before that. This is the star and these are the systems in the star system. Um, these yellow dots that you can zoom in no more than this are enemy spacecrafts, right? Okay. Here we go. You can't click on these, there are no tooltips, you just have to take my word, these are the enemies, right? They're divided into five defensive groups. We have a choice of, defend of dividing our fleet also in various ways. For this purpose, you use these cards that you can see at the bottom of the screen. Now what this means, for example, if we take cautious advance, our fleet is going to be divided into two battle groups, and you get combat modifiers. In this case, it's plus 10 damage and 15% damage reduction. But the retreat threshold is 50%. You see those little health bars up here on the screen? This shows you the 50%. It shows you that if the, let's say, health or HP of our fleet drops down to this point, we will automatically retreat and we will lose the encounter. We can also use, for example, hunting detachments. This will divide our fleet into five groups that will be coming from various directions. This time the bonus will be 20% retreat threshold, so we can take more of a beating before we decide to pack up our lunch and go back home in the event we're not victorious. And there is also staged assault, which divides our fleet into four strike groups, battle groups, and you get combat modifiers. But I want to point your attention to these three cards. They have this little mark up here, all means allowed. Now what that means is they are very much more aggressive than the regular maneuvers that you can do, the ones without the all means allowed signature, but the all means allowed entails a penalty to your galactic reputation, because if you choose a all means allowed strategy, you get access to, for example, nuclear missiles that you can launch at the enemy. Now this is considered a travesty in this world and in this conflict and it results in it results in your faction losing reputation across the galaxy however it's tempting to use these strategies simply because they are very much more effective and allow you to resolve the conflict quicker so you can either go full animal and just don't care about the reputation and be a brute and be like the freaking Zergs, just destroy everything in your path. Or you can try to strike a balance between being a diplomat and nemesis and using these strategies interchangeably. Now, before we attack, I want to point your attention to one more thing. Even though the combat is, well, it plays out pretty much automatically after you've chosen the strategy, you can modify it a little bit. Now, what I mean, let's... Yeah, let's take a look at the staged assault strategy. What you can do is you can rotate 
these numbers, which are corresponding, of course, to your strike groups, battle groups, pardon me. And you can, to an extent, modify which target, which battle group is going to attack. Now, each of these battle groups... Alright, this is your entire fleet. If we chose the frontal assault, this is the entire fleet. Now, there are various types of... Uh, ship classes here. You have your cruisers. You've got your artillery, which is fantastic for bombardment from long range. Very powerful, very powerful um, spacecraft. You have your carriers, which in turn have fighters on board. And every time you divide these mm, this fleet into battle groups, they are divided, but without your input. They, this is done. I guess by some AI, by some algorithm, which again, makes it easier and more user-friendly, but for all you grand strategy maniacs that want to control everything that's going on and every, every single aspect of the game, this might be a little bit underwhelming. But again, like I said, this is a rather, I don't want to say casual, but less demanding grand strategy title. So let's just deal with that and let's choose to... Yeah, let's choose this approach. Strike Force 1 is going to attack this cluster, Strike Force 2 this one, and two Strike Forces, Strike Battle Groups are going to attack this cluster, hopefully ramming them and moving further on to attack this one. Okay, we're going to press Start Combat, and you're going to see our ships warp in from the directions that we have assigned to them, and you see these little... Well, progress bars in here. You can also pause the encounter. You can do it half speed. You can fast forward it. Um, I want to also point your attention to your attention to the fact that since we've chosen that, uh, sorry, we, we haven't chosen the ob aggressive approach, but we get access to certain, not many, but to certain active abilities. We can choose to strike artillery we can excuse me lost my train of thought we can we can order our artillery units to strike at one of these three targets we can also decide to retreat without waiting for the health bar to drop um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to be shooting here we go we're gonna be shooting these guys, because since they're not engaged yet, let, we're gonna thin the herd out just a little bit before our troops get there. Let's do another strike, artillery strike. Y these missiles, you have to refuel after after a fight where it is used up. It's uh, refueled, and uh, you have to refuel and repair all the sustained damage. We have just won our first encounter. It wasn't very difficult. But hey, a win's a win, right? So what the hell is going on there? We've made contact with something. It appears sentient, perhaps somewhat humanoid, and operates heavily armed space vessels. They fired on sight, and we returned fire. We destroyed a small unit in Zoka system, probably a garrison. So whatever they are, we are now at war with them. What would you do if an unidentified fleet appeared out of nowhere in your star system? They must be terrified right now. I just hope we didn't start something irreversible. It is unfortunate, but I do not see how we could have done anything differently. We have two options now. We could have not shot back. Whoops. We could have not shot back. And first contacts like this are probably always a little tense. Let's go with the more peaceful approach. We're talking about many hundreds of crew members on our ships. I don't think we could have ordered them just to sit and get shot to pieces. Well, we could have, but I don't think we could have made anyone follow that order. So, what now? I still don't have my people here, though I would like to send a team to investigate the remains in this Zoka system. You do that when you can, Dr. Lawrence. In any case, the Zoka system is now secure and we need to move in and start setting ourselves up as soon as possible. That hasn't changed.
All right, fantastic. So, out of the wild, enemies appear. These are the members of the Ror clan, right? And if we zoom out, this is the stage of operations. This is the Pegasus galaxy. All right, guys. So, we've done battle. Not much more we can do this turn, so we are going to end the turn. And the other factions are going to make their moves right now. These are our allies. And you'll see in just a minute what they're all about. Turn two. This was it. We were here with very limited time and nearly endless pressure from home. For better or worse, this was our final plan. We would soon get to see how it would play out. Sir, our allies have now started moving through the portal and occupying the nearby star systems. Very good. So, well, we've now surveyed the Zoka system and it's not exactly a paradise. Unfortunately not. The planets we have are either toxic, unstable, overly hot, radioactive. I think we get the picture. We don't need a foothold. We do need a foothold, pleasant or not. The second wave is almost ready to move and we should immediately send them to occupy further systems. That means actively causing more conflict with the new civilizations we've met. It does. We need some territory and they haven't even mounted a retaliatory attack. One could say that they appear kind of weak, a state we should perhaps take advantage of. And having some depth in our defenses wouldn't hurt either. Do we really need to expand that fast? Were you listening, sir? Would you rather house millions of refugees on a toxic or radioactive planet? Well, we still don't know if it'll come to that. No, we don't, but I hope I made myself clear. I believe you did, Dr. Lopez. Lawrence, excuse me. So, Director, the second wave is ready and waiting for the order. We have three options now. Very well, give them the go-ahead. Doubt, are you sure that this is the direction we want to expand to? And that means more battles, doesn't it? We're gonna give him a go ahead because we all know where this is going. So, the game at this uh, perhaps uh, precise moment in time, it moved the fleet for us down here. We didn't do it, it was scripted because this is how the story of the game progresses. What we can do now is we can try to capture this star system. Now, the way this works, as you can see, we have two fleets in the system, and the enemy has two fleets in the system. So one of our fleets is at 86% or 86 fighting strength, and the other is at 65 fighting strength. The enemy is 44 and 31. Now, how this works is uh, when fighting over a system, both sides pick a fleet to be used for the battle. If the defender wins and the attacker has more than one fleet, the attacker can try to attack with a remaining fleet. Now, if the attacker manages to win, the defender is forced to abandon the system and flee. If they lose with all of their fleets, they're forced to retreat as well. If the fleets can't retreat anywhere, they're lost. That means if we have them encircled, if they don't have any of these cosmic webway, highway, starways, you get the picture, routes, they can't escape, they're lost. Now, if they do flee, they get some damage in the process. So, I think that we are not going to exhaust our 86 strength fleet. I think we're going to go with the one that's 65, and we should be able to pull this off. This is the situation in the Corrin star system, and 
I want to go with something a little bit more vicious this time, just to show you guys. Nuclear <laughs> weapons haha, <laughs> in space. All right, uh, we're going to go with uh, maybe not a frontal assault, but we're going to go with a lightning strike. We're going to come at them from six different angles at the very same time. And let's see if we can have a slightly better approach here. Can we attack directly this these inside clusters of enemies? No, we can't. We have to start from attacking the outside. But I wish you could zoom this out a bit more because like the UI is mm, covering a part of the map and it does not help navigation. So this is the maximum you can zoom out. Not ideal, but again, doable. Okay, I think I want to go with uh, yeah, with this approach, so we can attack as many enemies directly as we can from the get-go. So yeah, let's go with this, and we're going to go with the lightning strike. We're going to have six battle groups with a 15% threshold. Now they have the strategy hold the line, so we will have to, well, shortly put, exterminate them. Here we are, arriving at the corn sector from six different sides. And I'm gonna pause for just a second. You see these little icons here? Those are the nukes. So we're gonna launch a nuke in this general direction on Corun 1. There they are, flying beautifully. We are losing our battle, but no, we are now winning it. Okay, so the cooldown for the nuclear missiles has ended. We can launch another nuclear strike, or we can just artillery strike this part. Uh oh, we're losing. So yeah, let's let's help ourselves with another nuclear strike. Try to tip the scales in our favor. Yeah, that did a lot of damage. But will we be victorious? Will we be able to defeat them before we reach our 15% withdrawal threshold? Well, things are kind of hairy right now. It's very close. But I think we have this. Yes. We did just that. Now the enemy has retreated. We have been victorious. But we are really damaged. The Balin fleet is on its last legs. We're going to have to repair the fleet. Now this is the repair option here. It shows you the cost and resources and manpower and it also shows you how many turns this fleet is going to be out of commission this time it's going to be seven turns for them to fully repair restock and regain their strength now we also have been by the script thrown into the moram sector where we have 191 191 191 strong fleet the barnes fleet and we have two enemy fleets, but this should be a cakewalk. So, you can... Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, you can also choose auto-resolve, where the AI will choose the best optimum strategy. So, if you're into that, I'm, I'm just going to go with that for demonstration's sake. We're going to auto-resolve that. We don't choose any cards. The computer picks the strategy for us, and that was an incredibly quick win. Moram Sector is now under the protection of the United Nations. Zeus Link. All right. Can we do anything else? We could try to move into this. Oh, no, we have to have one more encounter here for some reason. I don't understand why, because we've just fought them. Huh. I think I, I might have missed something, actually. But okay, the game wants us to fight again with the Jung fleet. Oh, that's right, sorry. We were battling in Moram and we are now in Babib uh, sector or star system. And uh, yeah, Moram 
we've managed to conquer, and we also have been thrown into the, to the Babib sector. So we're gonna have to wage war here as well. And uh, this time let's choose to resolve this fight with choosing our own strategy. What's the situation here? They have layered defense, so that means that they are very close to the star of the system, and we have to get to them, so to speak. Um, is there a more direct approach? It would seem, yes, it would seem we can strike directly at their aircrafts, but that would mean that we will be open to attacks, potential attacks from these sectors. Have they got any space defenses here? No, I don't think they do. So, let, yeah, let's just launch a full-out uh, strike attack. I don't want to go full frontal because I want to use two battle groups, but not a cautious advance because a cautious advance is going to put our fleet threshold at 50. This is too close for comfort. So, victory at any cost. We're going to get 30% more damage and 60% extra casualties, which isn't ideal. So, maybe... Let's go with hunting detachments. I know this is a bold and sudden change of strategy, but that's what I want to do. Because I don't want to be too aggressive, and then again, I don't want to lose too many of my spacemen. Alright, let's try to do that. The fleet threshold is 20%. Let's speed things up, see how it plays out. Let's nuke them. I mean, not nuke them, but let's artillery strike them from the get-go. Uh-oh. Seems we're gonna... Yeah, we're losing pretty badly here. Wow, we're losing very, very badly. Defeat is imminent. It would seem that way. Yeah, there's no way we can... Let's retreat right now. There's no way we can win this. So we took our first beating. It happens in the grand scheme of things. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So, says Karolina Juric. Now that we have a bit more than the Zoka system Dr. Lawrence so passionately dislikes, we should do something useful with them. I just disliked the inhospitable planet features, planetary features, Mrs. Juric. Yep. So, if you don't mind, Director, I'd like to show you the plans we've made to make best use of these few star systems. And since there won't be a second chance, it's important that we get this right the first time, so please see to it. Sir, very well, very well, Carolina. This brings us into the building menu, because what is a grand strategy if we do not have the choice to settle, build on, expand, and fortify our plots of land? In this case, our little solar systems, star systems, within the Pegasus galaxy. In this system, we have three buildable planets. We have Zoka 2, Zoka 2A, and Zoka 1B. We're going to start with Zoka 1B, and if you take a look, each of these has a little description. This one is volcanic, and it's got, it's got an unstable magnetic field, corrosive atmosphere, and high gravitational pull. That means that the volcanic feature will give us an increase in mineral extraction by 25% and rare earth extraction by 50%. So I guess this is a no-brainer. We are going to build an outpost, which will then allow us to choose what kind of outpost we want. And we are going to choose the industrial outpost because it's going to extract minerals and rare earth minerals that we see up here on the screen. Basically, your gold and your wood, if I was to compare it to your basic RTS strategy. So we're going to pop an industrial outpost. Now, the power plant, which will generate power for these two mines, will be built in one turn. The mine will be built in two turns, and the second mine will be built in three turns. So that's fantastic. We've got Zoka 1B done. Now, let's take a look at Zoka 2A. What kind of planet is this? It's got 
alien ruins. It's rocky, it's got a toxic atmosphere, unstable magnetic field, an extreme day-night cycle. Are there any pluses? Yes. The surface here is covered with toxic substances that increase our science production. Excellent. We are going to build a research outpost which will grant us science points, which we will then use to do scientific research. So let's plop a research outpost right here. Excellent, and we have Zoka 2A, which is barren and rare, earth rich, and oh wow, nice. This I would basically build a um, industrial outpost here, but because the game wants us for instruction purposes, because this is kind of like an introduction, introductory chapter, they want us to build one science, one shipyard, and one industrial outpost. We've got one industrial outpost built here we've got one science so that leaves us with the shipyard outpost that we have to do to complete this main quest of the story we've got that ready now we can return to the star system uh, to the galaxies uh, map mm, let's quickly see if we can do this fleet is being repaired this fleet is Shoot, this one is scuffed as well. Pee, 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 pee. This is the... Yeah, the Fabra fleet. It's got 65. So no, I'm not going to do anything with it. I will not be crazy as to invade this sector. Although... Although... You know what? I will, because per the terms of engagement, if I am the attacker and I defeat one of the defending fleets, the other fleets should be forced to retreat. So, okay, let's try to do that. Let's see how this plays out. Not enough movement points. Oh, that's right. Oh, no, hold on. I have two movement points. I mean, I have these two green triangles, or maybe they should be bright green triangles because they're not lit up. All right, it would seem that way. Can I move... this fleet. I can't move this fleet, plus this one is also very, very banged up. So we're gonna re repair that. It's gonna take nine turns. So quite, quite a lot. Um, what can we do? We can also... Yep. We can also start building settlements on the other planets that we have. Alright. Moram 1A is surface is unbuildable. But below exist numerous hollow habitables, crevices, and cave structures. Gravity here is uncomfortably high, which prevents constructing anything larger than an outpost here. Hmm. Alright, let's build a research outpost here. Why not? Alright. We can also build on Moram 3A. This is barren, but it has rare earth veins and we are definitely going to build a industrial outpost here to increase production of our resources that we will so desperately need to advance further in the game with the tab key you jump into a star system to get all the all the all the details about it and with the tab key you also jump out one more thing that you can and should probably be building are transit stations Transit stations expand our supply network to this star, can be upgraded to supply hub, allowing fast travel for the fleets, and this is basically what it what it is. It's just a way to increase speed, the speed of uh, transport, of travel for our fleets. Mm, okay, can we build on any other systems? Yeah, okay, we've got a corn for a desert world. It does not provide any bonuses. As far as I can see, it does decrease our total energy production. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Blah, 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 blah. All right, let's make a sh shipyard outpost here as well. Okay, Corn 2A is buildable. And we get an increase to rare earth extraction by 50%. And science production by 25%. But I'm going to go strong for... Why can't I build? 
can be upgraded to settlement. Unbuilt. Hello? Oh, that's right, because this isn't, damn it, a buildable planet. Sorry. Uh, my bad, misclicked. Corn 5. What perks do we get here? Long-term happiness. Good. We're going to build an outpost for civilians. Because this planet, obviously, apparently, increases happiness. Um, there's one more buildable planet in here. Yeah, provides an increase to rare earth. So let's build a industrial outpost as well. I think that takes care of all the buildable planets currently in under our <coughs> protection buildable here oh wait hold on what about the Zohzera system right four more excellent four more planets that we can build on the Zeri one increase provides an increase to rare earth um, extraction or natural beauty long-term happiness or civilians no we're going forge world to use the warhammer 40k terminology we're all about industry we're all about making moolah and getting an edge in the financial department rare earth extraction increased by a hundred definitely zera three Increase of mineral and increase in natural beauty. I am running out of money right now. Can I afford not enough resources? No. I am two resources short for building, of building uh, an outpost. I require 1,500 minerals. I got 1,481. So I guess that is all we can do. I'm just going to check. Right, we can't do much more on this in this turn. So we're going to end this turn. Enemies and ally factions are making their moves right now. You can see the progress bar. All right, we're in turn. Three. Sir, the leaderships of the first expeditionary fleet and Mul and Al Mustamara have established themselves here in the VK and Shioko systems, respectively, and they would like to discuss the situation. They've called the first meeting of the Earth World. They've called the first meeting of the Earth War Council, or the EWC for short. It's an assembly of the military. Li li ugh. It's the assembly of the military leaders of the fleets. I'm terribly sorry. Got my tongue twisted there. Incredibly. So what me so that means we're sending Elodie? Can I participate myself? Technically speaking, you're not military, sir. The EWC doesn't represent our command structure perfectly, but its structure is essentially precisely what the whole body is for. A compromise. I'll maintain a connection with you throughout the meeting. So we are not making any decision without your approval, so you don't need to worry about that. Excellent. So I will be like the puppeteer, puppeteering the puppets from the back row. Good, good. Shadow cabinet. So, are we ready to send Grand Admiral Perron here? Could we avoid participating? Yes, I hope this EWC will prove to be useful. Could we avoid? The European Parliament has sanctioned our participation so I think our hands are tied on that front. It's not like we can dodge it, so let's just get it over with. And here are the two other admirals. One is representing like the Far East people of Earth, and one is representing the, I guess, kind of like what would be estimated like the American territories welcome colleagues to the first meeting of the earth war earth war council representing al mustamara of the daras combine admiral grelin madden at your service admiral samuel reed of the first expeditionary fleet good to meet you 
I'm Grand Admiral Elodie Perron of the Zeus Link fleet. I'm the ranking military officer, but not the highest authority in the fleet. Yes, I've heard of your interest in command structure. Shouldn't soldiers lead this kind of a military expedition? The military part isn't the whole truth, Admiral Reed. Perhaps not. But we've certainly found ourselves fighting for every planet and star. We've read the reports of your first contact, Peron. Not ideal, but hard to avoid. Whatever they are, we've hit a soft spot. I could even call it ideal. Based on the bits and pieces we've managed to translate, we're fighting a political entity called the Roar Clan, which is part of a much larger civilization called the Malsturak. The Malsturak. The Malsturak. Yeah, the Malsturak. How do the rest of them view us? We haven't made contact with the other clans yet. This is all based on the information we've gained from our rather sizable Malsturak population on in the Shioko system. That's even better. If they'd want to defend this royal clan, they'd already be here, so there's nothing stopping us from taking over everything they have. That appears a little excessive. Our needs are excessive as well. We didn't come here to play. Does the Zeus Link Fleet have a stance on this issue? We can either agree with the Admiral Reed, or we can agree with the other Admiral. We should avoid excessive aggression, but we can't stop here. I admit that. We should refrain from any excessive violence or provoking anyone else, but pacifying the Roar should take priority. Very well, so be it, says Admiral Reed. Great, so now we have a side quest of pacifying the Roar. We have to exterminate them. And we also have to move further into the galaxy and hold the Zoka system. So Zoka is our little crown gem jewel that we have to take care of very closely. Let's move further into the galaxy. Let's try to get into the Gyoka. They have two fleets. R is 65 strong. Their strongest one is 49. Yeah. Let's invade. Let's fight. Let's choose a strategy. Enemy is present in such configuration. This is the cautious advance. No, cautious advance is for wimps. Plus it's got a 50% retreat threshold, which is unacceptable. Definitely unacceptable. Five battle groups, four battle groups that give us perfectly plus 10% damage. Let's see what we can do with this configuration of the fleet. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for that. I'm going to tie all the enemies in combat from the get-go. They have hold the line, so they're going to battle it out till the last alien standing. And since we use a tactic that does not allow for war atrocities, we can't... We can't use nukes. And that is a big ass shame. Because uh come on. Where's where's one more battle group? Where's battle group four? They've been wiped out! Holy crap! Okay, so this is definitely not ideal. It seems that we have lost yet another fight, and yet another fleet. That's okay. We retreated back with our tail between our legs back to Korun. And the Roar Clan have shown their teeth more to the west in the Irjaf system. Huh. Alright. Now, Fleet Balian is banged up really badly as is fleet fabra where is fleet balin oh they're the garrison here okay i don't want to repair you i want to repair these guys they are definitely on their last feet do i have the money for that 
I do not, because I mean I require 204 rare earth minerals. And we only have 157. We're gonna have to wait a couple of more turns before all the settlements we've built for extracting mm, resources kick in and we get a little influx of money. So maybe we shouldn't be so aggressive for the next couple of turns. And wait this one out, see how it plays out. And if the Roar Clan will be launching any retaliatory attacks. Mm, I'm not super stoked about Zoka system being undefended. It's only got a garrison fleet and the other one is being repaired here. The Jung fleet. But if I move this fleet from the Moram sector, it'll leave it open to attack from the Yoka sector. Um, the only thing that we could do is move... No, we couldn't. Because... Right. Because we moved once to the Gyoka clan... Uh, to the Gyoka system to attack, and then we moved for the second time to retreat, I guess. Or the attack was counted as the second action that we get two of per turn. Hmm. Alright, let's end the turn. Let's see what happens now. Let's see what transpires this a turn. Okay, and we got invaded here in Korun. Let's choose our stronger fleet. Fleet with 24 strength. And let's fight. And this time we get a different set of cards to play. These are the defense cards. The ones we had previously at our disposal was... Mm, offensive cards and offensive tactics and this time we are going to defend ourselves we can we will definitely have to go with the all means allowed type of strategy to even think about winning mm. call the line no retreat, no surrender. This is like the last stand. If if this fleet falls, the system falls. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Five detachments from the enemy, two detachments, three detachments from us. Right. Let's try to nuke him out a bit. Even out the odds. Oh boy. They are eating us for breakfast. The Corrin system is officially lost. I am speechless. I am sad. I am in mourning for all those brave officers and soldiers that fell. Sir, there's something we seriously need to discuss. Very well, what is it? We've built a bunch of outposts which gives us infrastructure and production, but it hardly gives us the ability to settle people in meaningful numbers. And to have any facilities of larger scale, we need people to man them, so we need some place where to settle the first big wave of people. We've identified a single such planet in one of the systems controlled by the Roar Clan of the Malster... Mm -hmm, of the Malsterok civilization. It might be a good idea to grab it while they are the only hostiles to us. Yeah, it's in the bow system, not far from our current borders. Unfortunately, there aren't any sensible alternatives. So, if we ever want to set up anything proper here, we need that place, and we need it soon. The raw resistance has been resilient at times, but hardly very concentrated. Occupying this bow system shouldn't be too much of a challenge. We're re we are really beating this Roar clan to the ground, aren't we? Evan? No. I do not agree. If they're letting us do it, then gladly. Well, it's not exactly self-defense anymore, that's for sure. Mm. Justifications are the last least of our worries right now. We take what we can. Indeed. Also, there's another less urgent matter. I'd like to inform you that my research teams have finally set themselves up and... Uh, set themselves up and are ready to take up their designated tasks. Which basically means whatever we or you would like to design them to research. 
and there are many lucrative options if i may show you and we are going to go into the tree the tech tree tech research tree and the first thing that we can research is the pegasus habitation protocol which will allow us to construct settlements which basically are bigger civilian outposts it's like tier two civilian outposts so we're gonna do that you can also plan your research ahead if that's what you're going for if that's your strategy and you know the game inside out this is your playthrough number whatever you can do that in advance but for now because we only have 22 science points we're gonna have 22 science points science points and the cost of the pegasus habitation protocol costs 20 science units we're gonna go and stick with this and then see how it goes from there but this is a story for another time ladies and gentlemen i want to thank you so much for spending time with he with me here on gamesquisition please consider liking subscribing and commenting under this video if you liked what you saw and yeah till next time good luck have fun bartek out